Bienvenidos, Husham Deed, and welcome to another supplemental video tutorial and solution set on the Cisco Networking Academy Introduction to Python course. In this lab, 3.1.1.11, we're now going to take a look at comparison operators, specifically the equal equal sign, and we're going to be looking at conditional execution. In other words, we're going to be working with the if, el if, else control flow structure. So let's take a look at the lab and let's see what we have on our plate here. So it's five to 10 minutes, level of difficulty is easy. We're gonna be using the input function, again, prompting the user for input, and now we're going to be receiving a string that we are not going to type cast to another data type because we're going to be comparing what the user has entered in with the name of this a plant called Spathiphyllum. And I'm only going to say that one time. If you click on this link here, it'll show you a picture. Uh, definitely a pretty plant. And so we'll come back over here. I'm just going to call it the Peace Lily from here on out. So there are some benefits to that plant. You can read about them there, but let's get to the code. So imagine you've got a computer program that loves the Peace Lily. Whenever it receives input in the form of the word Spathiphyllum, uh, it involuntarily shouts to the console the following. So let's go ahead and get this program started. I'm going to go ahead and put up a couple of, uh, let's put down here, we'll say lab 3.1.1.11. And then let's dive in to the code with an input statement. Uh, and again, whoops, sorry, we're going to capture that. Uh, we'll just basically say flower right, or actually plant. So it's, it's calling it a plant. We'll go ahead and put plant in here. And then we'll say input please enter the best, the name, we'll say, please enter the name of the best plant ever, right? And so remember, we are going to be getting a string back from the input function. There's no need to typecast this to a string because that is what we're going to get back. Now, we can even go ahead and we'll print out plant and let's run this and see what happens and see if the program does what we think it's going to do. So I'm going to put in here rows and it prints out rows. And so as you can see, we're getting a string back and that's what's being printed. I'll leave that in there. It's a little code checking. And so now what we're going to do is use the if, el if, else control flow structure. So what are we checking for here? Well, I'm going to say if plant and here's where we use the two equal sign right the equal equal operator and this is the equality operator it's checking to see if two things are equal so if plant and again remember it's a string and spathiphyllum make sure i got that spelled right s-p-a-t-h-i-p-h-y-l-l-u-m now i'm checking to see if plant and again this is what the user entered in here Right? We're using that variable name that we defined here to point to the value right, or to be assigned the value that the user has typed in. And we're going to put our colon at the end of the line. Now, remember, this is how Python segregates out the different blocks of code, especially when we're using the if. It's going to be that colon at the end of our if statement. And then now we're going to use indentation. So there are no curly braces. If you're familiar with C or with Java, there are no curly braces here. It's simply the indentation, and we've got that colon that ends the if uh, test that we're trying to do. And remember, we talked about this on Tuesday night, that we're basically testing to see, is this true? And if this is true, then we're going to go ahead and print out and they want us to print out, yes, spathiphyllum. Hopefully I spelled that line. They want a capital S here, so let's make sure we keep it the way they have it. S-P-A-T-H-I-P-H-Y-L-L-U-M is the best plant ever. Now, they show the output down here with double quotes. So what we could do is if we want to keep those double quotes like they've got it, we'll go ahead and keep the double quotes. Maybe they're using the double quotes over here on the left simply to um, separate out this text or to highlight the fact that that's what they want it to print, but they show the box around it with the double quotes. 
So I'm going to go ahead and leave the double quotes in there, assuming that what they're asking us to do and what they're testing us on is our ability to either use delimiting single quotes on the outside with double quotes on the inside or to delimit it with double quotes and then use the escape characters inside the double quotes that are delimiting the string that we're trying to print out. All right, so if plant is equivalent to or equal to spathiphylum uh, with a capital S, we're going to print out that, yes, that is the best plant ever. Now, what if they don't enter that? Well, we've got this next set here. It says, um, and it prints, no, I want a big spathiphylum if the inputted string has a lowercase s, right? Now, it says lowercase. I'm assuming that they're not talking about, they're showing you an, with lowercase and a lowercase s, and here it's uppercase with a uppercase s and not the entire name. So what we're going to be checking for is, let's say, l if, whoops, sorry, let's click over here. So we're going to say l if, or in other words, else if, and let's say flower is equal to, and now we're going to say spathiphylum with a lowercase s, and we still need that colon there, right? We still need the colon at the end to sort of say this is the end of the test, of what we're testing for. And so else if the, I'm sorry, I put flower, I wanted plant. Keep thinking flower. All right. So if it's with a lowercase s, what we're going to print out is no, I want a big spathiphylum. Okay, and they also have the double quotes here on the inside. So we'll keep with the convention, right? We're delimiting our string with single quotes on the outside, and then we're going to be printing up those double quotes. Now, finally, we're going to put our catch-all, right? This is sort of the catch-all at the end. And that is if they don't enter spathiphylum with a capital S, and they don't enter it with a lowercase s at the beginning, if they enter some other flower name or plant name, or they enter spathiphylum uh, with maybe a capital letter somewhere there in the middle, this is our catch-all. And it's just basically saying else, right? If they enter something other than spathiphylum with a capital S at the beginning or a lowercase s at the beginning, this is what we're going to print out. And so again, they have this in double quotes as well, spathiphylum. And this is interesting. I'm not quite sure input uh, what the idea or the thinking was behind this error message. Uh, but other, they're basically just saying that with a capital S, spathiphylum was not input, right? Uh, and again, there may be other ways you can say that. This is just simply the way they have it. And then my convention is at the end of my file, I always like to say end of file. And let's go ahead. And let's grab this. I think it's going to be a little easier. We're going to have a little more flexibility over here in the, whoops, sorry, the integrated development learning environment. And I'll go ahead and leave that up there at the top. We'll print this in here and I'll just clean this up a bit. All right. So here we are. We've got our program. Let's hit F5 and we're going to save it off as 3.1.1.11.py. And now the program's going to run. So let's enter in rows, right? Let's check the else. And what we could do is actually put a space in there. So we're going to enter uh, rows and you can see the first thing that happens is if plant is equal to spathiphylum and it was not. Well, what about else if maybe it was spathiphylum, but they entered it with a lowercase s and it wasn't that. So then we come down here to our final conditional block, or I should say part of the conditional block, which is just the else. And you can see we print out that that was not input and that's what happened. Well, let's run it again and I'm going to save it again and we'll get that space. So we have a little space there between the colon. Looks a little better. So now let's enter it in spathiphylum. We enter it in correct and you can see we print it out, right? That was part of what we were doing. We printed out the plant name and then it says, yes, that is the best plant ever. Let's run it one last time here and let's enter P-A-T-H-I-P-H-Y-L-L-U-M. And let's enter it with a lowercase s, and that's where it says, no, I want it. Uh, I want a big spathiphylum, or we could have said I want an uppercase s with the spathiphylum there. Now, 
Something that's important, you'll notice I was spacing in here. Well, let's take a quick look here at PEP8. Again, on indentation, sorry about that, on indentation, and you can see it's right here at the very beginning in terms of your code layout. Now, indentation, we should be using four spaces for each indentation level. Remember, that is how Python is delimiting the conditional block that we're using. In other words, that if that's being used, that's how we're saying that this code underneath the if should be run and belongs to that if, right? Same thing with the L if and the same thing with the else. We're indenting four spaces and that is the recommended best practice. Now, the question that always comes up is on tabs and spaces. So can I use tabs? Can I use spaces? Remember, with Python 3, we cannot mix tabs and spaces for indentation. So what this is saying is, if you're going to use tabs, set it so that it tabs in four spaces, and then you can go ahead and use tabs. But what you cannot do is the following. I can't say, uh, and I'll, I'll tweak the else here. So I used four spaces here, but if I hit enter, uh, and actually this may be better with an example and actually let me just back up and hit tab and let's see if this does what I think it's going to do. No tabs allowed. So we should get an error message here when I rerun this and I type in rows if the interactive interpreter is going to cooperate with us. Uh, and so it did not do that. So I hit tab. So again, here, if you hit tab, it's set to four spaces. But let's grab all this code. And we can just go ahead and grab this real quickly here. And then let's pop out to our secure CRT window. And I think I maybe have it iconified. And let me show you what I'm talking about here. If I just uh, say plant.py, and then we paste in the code here. If I was to come back here and delete that line and then hit I for insert and then hit the tab, you can see tab shoots it way over, right? So now if I put a print statement in here and say, not gonna work, let's run this. So we say Python three and then plant.py, you can see that we get a tab error uh, is thrown an inconsistent use of tabs and spaces in indentation. And we did that right down there at that else statement. So you can see the program didn't even run because it picked up on the fact I was using spaces. And then here I put a tab. So Python 3, you cannot mix tabs and spaces. Pick one way to do it. And then that is how you should keep it consistent throughout your code. So again, our program worked. This is the if, l, if, else conditional structure. You remember we put that colon there and then we indent and indentation is indicating that that print statement belongs to this if. Then we have an l if and we're testing to see are these two things equal? And then we indent four spaces and this print only belongs to this l if. Finally, we've got our catch all else the four spaces and this print will only run for the else condition, right? All right, well, hopefully that makes sense. We walked through, uh, learned a little bit about botany along the way, and that is going to do it for this supplemental video tutorial and solution set on lab 3.1.1.11. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope to see you in another video soon. Stay safe, stay happy, and stay healthy. And we'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.